It's NBA season, MLB postseason, and I've got even a little soccer for you on today's show. And I'm here to tell you which cards I would buy, sell, or hold. This is The Forecast. with you on another episode of The Forecast, the show where you tell us each and every week who you want to hear about. And on today's show, it's NBA season, so I've got a couple of basketball players for you. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about baseball. We're in the midst of October after all. So I've got some Major League Baseball players and even a little soccer on the back end. We'll go across the pond for that. First, though, before I jump into any of those cards or any of those players, I want to remind you that this episode of Sports Card Investor is brought to you by eBay. eBay is here for the card collectors with a trick for every trade, like advanced tools for price tracking with Price Guide Beta within the eBay app and up to 50% faster listing with Image Scan. Learn how collecting just got smarter at ebay.com forward slash trading hub. So let's start with some major league baseball and a guy who has been playing his way through the postseason for the Los Angeles Dodgers is Mookie Betts. So you guys want to hear about what's been happening here with Betts's card. Now, somewhat of a down season after an MVP runner up season last season. He slashed 264, 367, 487 in 2021. 23 homers, 58 ribbies. His most popular card on market movers over the last 30 days is his 2014 Bowman Chrome Pop Prospects PSA 10. So let's take a look here. And if I again am pulling the last 30 days, that card is down about 15% over that period of time. Pretty high pop on this card. Mookie Betts is a popular player in the hobby. If I look at his 2014 Topps Update Base PSA 10, even a higher pop on this one, well over 3,000 of these. That card's up about 4% over the last 30 days, so not a ton of movement. I'm a little surprised here that we're not seeing more movement for Mookie Betts. I know he's a great player. He obviously lands with the Dodgers in his second season after that controversial trade from Boston. We have moved past that controversy, but he's on a great team and a team that's taken it into the postseason. So not a lot of move reflecting that over the last 30 days. What do we do here, Jeff? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? I own a lot of Mookie Betts cards. I started buying them when he was with the Red Sox, and then I bought more when he got traded to LA because I love the prospect of him going to the Dodgers and winning a ring. And that's exactly what happened. And now the Dodgers are threatening perhaps for another ring, although I hope that doesn't happen with my Atlanta Braves trying to put the brakes on that. From a long-term perspective, I love Mookie Betts as an investment. This guy is an absolute stud. In the short term, I wouldn't buy right at this moment. I think you've missed your buying window. They could go up a little bit on the news of a Dodger of the Dodgers getting into the World Series again and maybe getting another ring. But then as we've commonly seen in other sports, there will probably be a fall after the championship and as things go into the postseason. And of course, if they don't make it to the series, then they'll probably start falling right away. So if you want to buy some Mookie Betts cards for the long run, I'd wait until after the season is over, wait for prices to come down a bit because they likely will. Can't guarantee it, but they likely will. But then I think it's a good time to buy because I really do like bets as a long-term investment. So let's keep it in Major League Baseball. It is October after all. Let's talk about the Tampa Bay Rays infielder Wander Franco. Now an extremely popular rookie in 2021 in the hobby. He lived up to the massive hype. He slashed 288, 347, 463, 39 ribbies, played 70 games, reached base in 43 straight games. An unbelievable streak. So let's take a look at this budding superstar in the sport. His 2019 Bowman. Chrome Prospects PSA 10 over the last 30 days. Huge pop on this card. There's almost 10,000 of these. That card is it's basically flat. Basically no movement here over the last 30 days. If I'm looking at his 2019 Bowman Paper Prospects PSA 10, lower pop, still pretty high though. Almost 6,000 of these. That card is up 39% over the last 30 days so his team may not be in it anymore but he is certainly 
somebody who is going to be in it, I would imagine, for a very long time in his career. So, Jeff, what do we do here with Franco? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? Wander Franco is one of those rare prospects who actually delivered on the hype. We have been hearing about this guy, it seems like, forever. He was anointed as like the best up and coming young baseball player. People were going crazy over his cards for years now. And it was always kind of like, well, when are we actually gonna see this guy in the majors? When are we gonna actually see him do something? Well, he has now, he's proven it. He had a really good rookie season. This guy appears to be for real. He appears to be legit. I think he's still got room to go up. I'm not buying a lot of Wander Franco cards because of the fact that his prices were already high with the level of anticipation that was surrounding him, but he delivered. So if you're a believer in this guy and if you like to get on those young rising baseball stars who could go on to do really big things, sure, buy some Franco cards. Probably wait into the off season to see if they come down a bit but then buy some Franco cards. It's a bit speculative because he still does have a really high bar to live up to. And we'll see if he can continue to progress season after season. But the early results look pretty good. Now I mentioned it is NBA season. It is back already. That really snuck up on us fast. And the Golden State Warriors are going to be without one of their shooting guards at the beginning of the season, and you're probably used to by now them being without this dude in Clay Thompson. I mean, he has missed the last couple of seasons with that torn ACL and then a torn Achilles, and now he's gonna miss part of this season as well. Arguably the NBA's best three and D player, at least back when he was fully healthy. I do wonder, I am one of those people that questions if Clay is going to be Clay. I, I don't think that the Warriors are ever going to be the Warriors again. And I think in part because I'm just really apprehensive that Clay is ever going to be Clay again coming off of all of these injuries. Nevertheless, fans have been buying up Jordan Poole while waiting for Clay Thompson to take his spot again. He has not been incredibly popular in the hobby during this time, a very low volume a carb movement during this time where he's been injured. And, you know, obviously I've talked about it on this show ad nauseum where guys who are in the headlines and guys who are active on the court tend to be the guys where we see the most movement and the most value in the hobby. And although Clay Thompson, three years ago uh, was a player who was of course dominating with all of these injuries the last couple of years. And now we're going to see more of a lull here headed into this season. He has probably kind of just fallen out of favor here in the hobby. People don't have him on the forefront of their minds anymore and he's not making headlines. We're not seeing him play. So let's take a look at his 2020 Prism Base PSA 10. Over the last year, that card is down 27%. So you can see his card value has certainly suffered with these injuries. But again, at one time, Clay Thompson, a massively exciting player on an unbelievably dominant and historic Warriors team. Jeff, what do we do here with Clay Thompson? Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? Is he ever gonna be Clay again? Basketball needs Klay Thompson back. Basketball needs the Golden State Warriors back. That was such a fun stretch when the Warriors were going full swing, full out, incredible shooting from anywhere on the court. And when Klay Thompson went out, they really have, have missed a beat. Of course, they had Steph Curry out for a while too, and that certainly didn't help. But I would love to see Thompson get back and be healthy this season. I do think Thompson's card prices will probably increase as he returns. I think you often see a player who's been out for injury for a long time, and then the anticipation of their return, the fact that he's being talked about on Sports Center, and then his first game back will, of course, be a big highlight package that everybody will see. That should help his card prices at that moment. The question, though, for the long term is can he stay healthy? And can the Warriors actually be competitive in a Western Conference now that so many other teams have risen up around them? I, I don't know. I, I don't really know about Klay Thompson for the long term. If you're looking for a short term flip, I think it's an opportunity to buy right now and maybe flip when he gets back and has his first breakout game. But for the long term, I'm a little iffy on Klay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors. 
So let's keep it in the NBA for a moment here. I'm excited about basketball season, and I am super excited about this next player who I'm going to talk about in Trey Young, the Atlanta Hawks, very young superstar. I think I'll put him in that category point guard. Now, he had an unbelievable first playoff appearance. I think that kind of catapulted him to that superstar level, certainly that star level, even if you aren't ready to yet call him a superstar. I think he will be in the future. Personal opinion, I love Trey Young. He's a super exciting player. So does the hobby, by the way. Very high pop counts for Trey Young. People are really excited about Trey Young, and he's one of those players that's so exciting to watch. And guys who tend to be really exciting to watch also tend to bode well in terms of their card value. So let's take a look here at his 2018 Prism Base 10. I mean, there is well over 10,000 of these. Over the last 30 days, really not much movement at all. I mean, down 5% technically, basically no movement. Again, this is leading up to season. There isn't anything going on in the NBA over these last 30 days that we're looking at on this chart. And so people have kind of uh, gone stagnant here with Trey Young during this period of time. If I look at his Donruss, his 2018 Donruss base PSA 10, more of the same. This one's a lower pop, up 6% over the last 30 days. I mean, that slight bump really amounts to kind of a whole lot of nothing. Basically, not much movement in terms of Trey Young over the last month, but here we are. It is NBA season, Jeff. Trey Young, your Atlanta Hawks. Do we buy, do we sell, or do we hold? Trey Young is a player I am not iffy about. And look, I'm a homer. I'm here in Atlanta. Trey Young is the biggest star we have in this city but he lives up to the hype. I love his swagger. And it's odd because he's got this kind of villain personality where he puts that swagger out there, but he's so likable at the same time. I think most people find Trey Young a bit likable, even though they're probably gonna hate him at the same moment in time because of the ridiculous swagger he brings to the court. You know, I really like Trey from a long-term investment. Again, I'm biased, but I own a ton, a ton, a ton of Trey Young cards. And I bought him early on because I said, you know what? This guy has some pizzazz. He's got some energy to him that's going to make him a really unique player to watch on the basketball court. And he's delivered on that promise. I think this guy is going to be entertainment, pure entertainment for years and years to come. And that's a big part of card prices. People like buying players who make splashy moves on the court and who they love to watch. Trey Young, in my opinion, is one of those guys. We give you what you want here on the forecast and what you want is some soccer talk from across the pond. So let's do it. Erling Holland, he is the star striker for Bundesliga club, Borussia Dortmund and Norway's national team. Now one of soccer's top young stars, and most popular buys has been linked to several Premier League teams for a transfer. So lots of talk in terms of headlines and lots of attention in terms of where his career could go. That normally bodes well for the hobby. Again, players in headlines and players who it's future may be a little uncertain, but in a good way, budding superstars, guys who might be on the move, guys who are linked to tons of rumors that normally works well in the hobby. So let's take a look. Remember, his cards, because again, budding star, everyone knows it, already pretty high prices on his cards. So if he gets that transfer, is that going to continue to increase? How high can we get for the price on his cards. If I'm looking at his 2019 Topps Chrome Champions League base PSA 10, over the last 30 days, that card is down about 17%. So even with all of the talk surrounding Holland, and even though he is a budding star or really a young superstar, his card value is down slightly, which expensive cards so maybe that has something to do with that if we look at his 2019 tops chrome champions league sapphire editions psa 10 over that same period of time that card's basically stagnant so that one is doing a little bit better that one also slightly higher pop so jeff what do we do here with erling highland do we buy do we sell or do we hold as I've said on the show before, I am not the closest follower of soccer. It is not a sport that I grew up on at all. So I don't keep up with the day-to-day -day of everything that is happening in the European soccer leagues. 
But I know a lot of people who do, including people who work for Sports Card Investor, and they tell me that Holland is the real deal. This guy is special, and I've seen the highlights. I've watched some of the games. I've seen what this guy can do on the pitch, and also how he looks. Like the very fact that he looks so strikingly unusual out there, that he's this this monstrous player, it, it's that's a good thing. Like you need that unique look to stand out. It's the same reason why I like Trey Young and the fact that he's got swagger. And so you look at him, you focus at him, focus on him. He looks different on the court than everybody else. So does Holland when you're watching a soccer match. And I think that's a great thing for his card prices, his play is absolutely incredible. He's highlight real worthy. It seems like every time he plays a game. So I'm listening to the people who know soccer and I have invested in Holland. I like him for the long term. So there you guys have it. Five cards that you guys asked us to talk about, which is of course what we love doing for you right here on the forecast. If you miss anything, what are you doing? Like what the hell are you doing? Yeah, hit the bell icon. It's free, it's easy, it's simple, and then you're subscribed to the channel, and then you miss nothing. You miss nothing from any of us here at the Sports Card Investor team. As always, thank you so much for watching. You can hear me on ESPN Radio this weekend on Saturday. You can follow me on social at AmberW790. Don't miss any of our content. And remember, guys, as always, happy investing.